Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared, and we're one minute early because Shane said, let's go! So, let's go! I'm sitting here anyways. Might as well. What's up, Lacey? You made it on time. Wow! Must be a special day for Needs Knives. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm actually using my new tripod right now, which is... I can't tell you how awesome it is to have... A good tripod right now. What's up, monster? Um, this is the one I was using. I got a broken one over there. And then this is the one I've been... Look, look at this. It already... This is the one I've been using. This thing's broke. I had a I had a, a paracord wrapped in this side. This side, you know, had something. And then it's got tape because this thing, the part to screw in is on there. But it pops out. This thing was redonkulous. And then the other one doesn't take that part that I need for the, the phone holder. This one came with everything. Everything. And the person knows who they are. Thank you, man. You know exactly who you are. And I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. It helps with... Because like the, it's the little details, man, that make a huge thing with channel. Now, don't get me wrong. You can start a channel with nothing. I, started, I didn't even have a tripod when I started. I literally was leaning it on. What did I do? I stacked books on top of a um, a laundry basket. <laughs> I mean, I totally rigged everything for the first few months. And then uh, got a tripod. And uh, I didn't even really. I mean, I took it serious. Like, not really at first. But, like, I took it serious. Meaning I made video. I started making videos. But it wasn't until about six months. Maybe a year in is when I really took it serious. Because it was like. I was, like, at that point where it's like. I'm either doing this or not. All right. I'm putting so much time into it. Or I wasn't putting. I mean, I was putting a lot of time into it. But it was, like, that that turning point where I either need to go all in or not. Right, like because I'm putting too much time into something that I'm not gonna take serious, or I need to put more time into something I'm taking serious, and that's the way I am. Like when I get started on something, no matter what it is, like I j I go balls deep. Like it's all or nothing, right? <clears throat> I don't like having backdoor plans. I do not like that. I think that that is a way to like to set you up for failure. And what I mean is, like, it's kind of like the plan B. Everybody says, oh, you should have a plan B. You should have a plan B. Fuck a plan B. You know, it's like the only way to go is, you know, plan A. Because if you have that plan B in the back of your head, I'm not saying don't be prepared. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you're already thinking that you possibly could fail, then that means you won't put all your eggs in that basket, no matter what it is. I even heard, um, what was it, Jason Knight. Yeah, uh, the custom knife maker. He said that. He said, uh, because like one of his questions from like a QA was asking him, How do you get into knife making? He said, Do you love knives? He's like, Do you really want to get knife making? And then the, the answer was, then sell everything you own and invest in this, 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 and this. And he's like, and just don't think about days off, don't think about anything but knives. So put your all into it. And that's so true. It's, uh, you know, when you really are devoted for something, you, you know, sometimes you got to take a risk and that might mean selling things that you, you love or selling, you know, things to acquire the money to invest in yourself. But it's risky because you think like, well, I could invest this and in get nothing, like <laughs> literally nothing. <clears throat> but if you put everything into it, then how can you fail, right? How can you fail if you actually put everything into it and you don't allow yourself to fail, you know, meaning cover every single corner for you to succeed. And I'm not saying I'm perfect with the channel. There's so many things I could do better. And there's so many things like that I'm not doing as good as I could right now. Like if I had a secretary, holy shit. I know a lot of you guys think like, oh, well, Kara, she can't do that shit. She ain't got time for it. So it's like I'm putting so much time and effort into the channel, which I love to do. But I'm just saying I'm only one person. So, but um, what's that, Michael? I think you're preaching to the choir. What did Michael say? Knives is making me broke. <laughs> yes, you are preaching to the choir. Well, you know what you do is, and I, I had this written down on a segment before, but I never got to it. 
and it was recycling knives. So I don't have it written down today, but we'll talk about it for a second. So what you can do is you can acquire, say, 15, 20 knives, right? That's not that many knives. When you look around at people's collections, people got hundreds and hundreds of knives. Like, I think my knife collection's big. Holy shit. There's some people out here that got some real collections. Like, they got everything. But you could acquire, like, 20 knives. And if you make sure, like, five of them are sought-after knives. You know, knives that you know will sell no matter what. Well, what you can do is you can constantly recycle those knives. And if you know how to play the knife game, you already know what knives are going to sell out really quick and sell high on the on the secondary market. I'm not telling you to sell high on the secondary market. What I'm saying is that if you invest in a knife like that, that knife's guaranteed to sell like that if you, you know, you, you decide to sell it. And in some cases, you know, you can ask for a few extra dollars. <clears throat> I'm not saying ask, you know, for a ridiculous amount. I'm saying a few extra bucks. There's people out there that, that make a lot of money off of raffles. Big money. I'm talking about like uh, Koenigarius money because they, they've uh, learned how to play the knife game where they buy specific knives that they know sell for a high value and they buy a lot of them and it, they basically raffle them off. The, the raffle is always going to get them their money back plus money. So they're going to get, get profit and people win knives. So, and it, it's kind of a cool system because people love getting in them and, I mean, it's, I mean, when you have an opportunity to get the knife that you want, like a Koenigarius or whatever knife, but like an like the most badass version ever, and you only got to pay like forty bucks, twenty bucks to get in the raffle, you know, and it's only like between like ten people, twenty, or I guess it'd be more than that, like twenty people, just depends on the knife and everything. Some of them might be a lot more than that. Um. What is a rock set? I actually got the rock set over there in the box, and uh, I got the top closed because, um, you know, that case, that box is made to keep moisture out. So I'm going to make sure I keep the top closed. I was going to just leave it open. You know, during the day, I'll leave it open and everything when I'm coming and going. However, you know what? I got something to replace the rock set today. Well, not replace, but we got the old Benzy because we're going to talk a little bit about old Benzy here in just a second man this one's so smooth look at this drop and it's a sabenza this is so smooth such a smooth sabenza now this is obviously a slow rolling knife now you can flick it a lot of people when they talk about smooth right I, from my perspective when I think of smooth, and I, I do this all the time to myself too, like I'll, I'll call a knife on bearing smooth. When a knife on bearings ain't smooth, like that's a, that's a different level of smoothness. Smoothness to me is like Teflon or washers when it's just like frictionless. Um, I don't know what I should use for the word, like for the bearings when the bearings are just ultra smooth. You know, when they're like just fall shutty. But you know what action is really, really nice? And I'm actually going to bring it up right now. And then we'll talk about the Sabenza here in a second. Is when you can find bearings. Talking Benzins. This live is going to be fire. Got it. So uh, the best action is the action when you can get bearings that feel like washers. Let me explain, because I'm not talking about bearings that are stiff. I'm saying the bearings that are so smooth, but they're frictionless. Like, you never feel like a ball is rolling. It's just, it. if anybody's ever had one of those, the, the like, kind of like, think about this. Think about, like, a, a Shaman or a PM2 when it's broken in. How do I have one up here? I don't. But when they're broken in, they, you know, you just hit that the compression lock and it falls, right? It's so smooth, even though it's locked up very, very solid. Jason Brown, hey, man, thank you. If you guys can please check out the GoFundMe for Libertarian, definitely go check out the GoFundMe for Libertarian. Uh, thank you, Jason Brown. Yeah, definitely go check that out. 
Jared, I recently bought a knife I know you would hate. When I get a few other knives, I'll send it to your wife. Awesome, man. I love hating on knives. <laughs> but this uh, knife, the Convict, is like that, where it's on bearings, but look how smooth it is. But it's you can't feel the bearings rolling. The bearings just, it's just so smooth. Now you also, what's up, baby? Hey. Here's my lovely wife, Kara. Yo, what's up? What's going on in here? Um, the. It's what? What? I went on a walk with my mom down Blackberry Bush. Nice. It's in our backyard. Wow. That's how far I had to go to find it. It's not far. No. We also have a mulberry tree in our backyard I didn't know about. Yeah, so just... now I'm going to make jam. Huh. I, I, came here I never just noticed to tell them back there. Oh, yeah. And I know that they were all so excited to know what I was up to. Thank you, John Evans. Yeah, um, definitely check out Libertarians GoFundMe. I thought they said Thank you. Lib beard uh, be Libertarian. Um, like Libertarian. Um, so then there's also, oh, thank you, John. I, I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate all the donations. You guys have no idea how much it really helps the channel, seriously. Um, sometimes I feel like I don't thank you guys enough for the donations. Um, and But uh, when you get a knife on washers that feels like it's on bearings, right? Isn't that awesome? So like, kind of like I was saying, like with the shamans, the PM2s, the para 3s, where... It's, it's locked up very solid, but they're just, they're fall shut action. Like they're just very, very smooth. It's like they're frictionless. Those two types of action, I think are like the best because you can get even the, the bearing knives that are fall shut. I mean, just complete fall shut action, but you can't feel those bearings rolling. What's up, man, Don? Uh, man, Don said, hey. Which knives are bearings and feel like they get awesome? Which knives are bearings? Um, lots of knives to be honest. Um, okay, like I could even say, like, say the, the new bag lighter, right? This knife feels like it's on bearings, but it is, so it's not a bad thing. I'm not saying like knives that do that are bad. I'm not saying that at all. It is so smooth. That that new Kaiser Justice, that thing, you can hear the bearings rolling, which I think is kind of cool. It kind of sounds like a chain. I'll grab it really quick so you guys can hear what I'm saying. Now, I actually like this knife. Like For a work knife, for a tough, hard-use knife, let's see if you guys can hear it. It actually feels like it's on bearings, but that's cool though. And it's, it's awesome. It's very solid. This is a tough knife, but it feels like it's on bearings. So that's kind of where I'm saying it, where like, so the ones that don't feel like they're on bearings, the ones that feel like they're on washers, they're silent. They feel very tight in the pivot, but yet they're extremely smooth. That's kind of where I'm going with it. Um, and it, you don't feel it like so like with some knives like you'll feel it, it'll be ultra smooth from here to here but then here to here it'll like start like getting a little rough or something it has a consistent feel all the way down that's the way this convict is i mean it's so smooth donkulously smooth now um talking about on um, knives that are fucking discontinued that shouldn't be let's talk about that really quick the damn Griffin, it kills me that this is one of the best models that I think Real still ever put out. I second seems logical idea of ugliest knives vid. Yeah, I should do that. That would be cool. Um, Gillian's bearings in my buoy are super freaking smooth. Yes, they are very, very smooth. So, but that's when you're 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 paying for custom, right? You're paying for custom flattened bearings. So that's on another level, but to get it like that from the factory, whoo, this is on roller bearings. So this is on needle bearings, okay? Not regular bearings, needle bearings. Ultra smooth, right? Very false shutty, but it's a button lock. Now, the beautiful thing about the Griffin 
it's it's a handful of things. One nice big stock pen, okay. Whether you we're talking about the aluminum version, oh fuck, or the man, we are all messed up, ain't we? It's Canada's in here. All right, just, I'll, I'll kick back for a second. Sorry, guys. Are you doing something? This internet's all messed up. Oh, Greg, thank you, man. Keep on slicing, brother. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Um, you guys are awesome, man. Um, and actually, I do want to thank uh, all you guys, man, all you viewers, everybody before, you know, while we're a little scrambly, you know, waiting for it to clear up. I want to thank you guys for always showing up, always showing support. You know, just just helping me out across the board with uh, with views and likes and coming in here and hanging out and you know really uh, elevating the channel because it is a huge deal. Like I, you know, I keep saying that you know it takes a community to run a knife channel. I truly believe that. I love this community so much, and you guys are the best, man. You guys, you know, people that jump in, right? I think this is kind of funny. Oh, we're cleared up. People that jump in the community, right? That they, they kind of, you know, they jump in, right? They, they don't know it yet. They haven't really experienced it. They jump in and they don't realize everybody's fucking tight. Like everybody knows each other. Everybody, you know what I mean? Like, so they jump in, like, like say to a live and don't realize like these guys do this every week. Not only that, but they send each other stuff. They help each other out. They're this and that. And that's what winds up capturing people because they wind up seeing how tight knit it is. But I thank you guys so much for being so awesome to this channel. Um, but now that we're cleared up, so it's on needle bearings and the button, the button lock is a str what? There's some right here. The button lock is extremely strong, like really tough. It's it's nice and big. The spring is nice and big. It's there you go. Go check out knife modders Lindy and Richie B. I actually just sent them a knife that I couldn't actually handle. Um, but uh but yeah, so it's a very strong spring. So what it does is it makes it work. No play side to side, no play towards the lock, which a lot of button locks after a long time wind up getting a little rattle in the lock. My aluminum version I used for a long time. It felt just like it did brand new, like, or better, you know, better than brand new. This thing has good geometry. Look at the sharp ring choil. The sharp ring choil is all the way back here. So they give you all of that life right there to sharpen. Nice geometry. Um, super duper smooth. The clip works great. The ergos are good. There's so many great things about this knife. Now, my, and they also have a lock back here too. So you can lock it open if you really want to. So you can't press the button. Now the action, amazing, really good. But the titanium version, the high end version, they put these dumbass inlays in which are stupid, okay? I hate them too. If they would have put my card in there, this thing would be, I don't think they would have ever discontinued it. Now, the aluminum version was just raw aluminum, not raw, but it was like coated, but what I mean is there was no inlays. Now, that one was a hot seller for a while, 14C28N with aluminum, um, you know, scales, but it had all these other things, big stop pin, everything. Um, it does have T6s, but good hardware stuff. So my point is why did they discontinue that without making a second version? It really drives me nuts. They should have made a 2.0 version. All they could have tweaked like three things and made this knife like the hottest seller of 2021. Seriously. I could name three things you could do to this knife and it it'd probably be like one of their hottest sellers, especially if they kept it at the price their aluminum version with 14C28N was like 65 bucks. Damn it, man. It drives me nuts that they, they discontinued that without making a 2.0. Uh, what are you saying? Nice, Talica. I actually just got some Westinghouse my car. To, ooh, delivered today. Going to try to make a show scale filler tab and lock bar stabilizer. Nice. 
I had one of those companies. He must have erased the last comment I made. Contact me on Instagram, you know, and they're like, oh, we sell blah, blah, blah. And it's like beautiful Timascus, right? But like bars of it and um, slabs of it. And I could see that I had already commented to him like six months ago. Say, yeah, bro, I don't buy that type of shit. You know, if you want to send me some, I'll take it. But I, I'm not buying any, right? I don't even know you. And, um, but he must have erased the comments. So I just basically said the same thing. I said, like, as I said before, man, <laughs> I don't buy that stuff. Like, think about it, what am I buying bars and bricks of Timascus for? Um, Unless if I was going to make something out of it, which I, I'm not like, or I'd have to send it to a custom maker for them to make something. But if he wanted to send it for me to showcase it for people to buy, I'll do that. But I'm not going to buy some, you know, this shit's expensive. I have a lot coming. I have a real cool, unique pattern. Sabenza 31 on the way. That's amazing, man. We're going to talk a little bit about Sabenza. So, um, Sabenza's. Sabenza, Sabenza, Sabenza. So the things that make a Sabenza so awesome, right? So people get a Sabenza. And sometimes I think some people are underwhelmed, right? Like I remember the first time when I finally experienced a Sabenza. I thought it was awesome. Like I was super excited and because I, I already knew what to expect. Care, on the other hand, she was disappointed because she heard, oh, it's so smooth and blah, blah, blah. So she's picturing because she had handled bearing knives. She's picturing smoother than bearings, right? But it's like, no, this is different because the tolerances are so tight. Camera. What it is, is that you can see I had a black eye from that surgery. What it is, is. It's super, super tight tolerances that are just constructed like to so tight, yet it's extremely smooth. It's amazing that you can even move the blade because it's so tight, right? But yeah, it's so silky. That's the kind of the point that people are trying to get at. Now, when you go to the blade, it's got a nice, deep, tall hollow grind. And technically, the first couple sharpenings, it actually gets thinner behind the edge the way the hollow grind goes it goes like this and then kind of, then once it gets up to the tip it kind of peaks out like that so the very tip of the edge from the factory is actually thicker than behind the edge so the first few sharpenings it's going to get thinner and you can sharpen it for a long time a lot of sharpenings and it'll, it'll keep looking the same because the plunge grind is all the way underneath the scale you can't even see it because it's underneath anyways so that's a beautiful thing from a knife like this the spine is crowned right the jimping is done with um I'm, i can't think of the name of it there's a name of the system that to make this kind of jimping, the only way you can get this kind of jimping is if you have that machine, um, EDM or something like that. It's like a wire or something, but very good jimping. Now, the obviously there's a million different kinds you can get, right? Like the one that the that Talik has got coming, holy shit. You're talking about fireworks, right? <laughs> this thing's top notch. And that's the beauty of it. Like this one has the custom wood inlays. Beautiful, right? There's so many different kinds you can get. So you can have two or three of them, and even though they're the same knife, they're different. And that's that's kind of a beautiful thing. It makes it to where you can want to experience it's Canada in here, man. You can experience different um materials, different qualities from a knife that's gonna last you an extremely long time. Man, is Canada in here, guys? I'm sorry if uh they are. Seems like they are. Anyways, hopefully you guys can hear me. Hopefully everything's okay. So I, the one problem with the Sabenza is that damn thumb stud. So once you switch it out, though, which is cheap, I switched mine out for twelve bucks, something like that, twenty bucks. Maybe it was twenty. I don't even think it was twenty bucks. Um, and night and day difference, man. It makes it so much better. Um, lagging a bit now and then. Okay, I'll try to talk slow. I'm sorry, guys. Hopefully it clears up here in a minute. It seems like it keeps clearing up and then going back. 
But USA made, right? USA made, which is amazing. And the strength, lockup, geometry, the neutral ergos, the, the length, the thickness, the depth is perfect for a hand for a work knife. Now, I'm not saying it's the most comfortable knife in the world. And yes, I would love to see CRK do more things. I think that they have a lot of potential to do a lot of other things. But they do have different blade shapes. They do have different models, you know, like the Amnanzan, you know, the, the Insigne and Kosi, all that stuff. So there are different things. And then like the, um, was it the 90? Uh, they do have a, a few different things, but I'd like to see them do a little bit other things. But another thing that's awesome about this, this is like the best clip in the world. This clip works so good. I love the Savenza clip. And the original finish is actually a tacky finish. It's made like for grip, right? But there are different finishes, so I don't want to say that's the only finish. But uh, also, they have the the... the the pivot barrel, which makes it to where when you screw it all back together, which is very easy, when you screw it in, you can go all the way to tight. Now, yes, if you crank it down, you, you will slow down the action. But for the most part, you just go right to tight, and it's perfect. That's exactly where you need to put it, which shows the precision in the build. Now, I'm thinking about, I got to get to these things I wrote down. <clears throat> so I'm thinking about taking my Hinder 3-inch. All right, this one's technically cares, but we won't say nothing. Thinking about taking this titanium scale off and throwing it on my little non-flipper. I personally love the little non-flipper. It's super comfortable in the hand. No flipper tab in the way. And this one's awesome too. Holding on to this one, you know, it's got that that the heavier weight and just something about the titanium. I'm thinking about swapping it over to this one. To the non-flipper i do have other scales for this non-flipper but i'm thinking about just changing it up the uh, the maroon scales are starting to get a little old even though i do have them broken in a lot thought about throwing the g10 on there but then i was like man why don't i throw the g10 on this one and throw the titanium on this big daddy i think that might be awesome flipper delete that other one with the fuller oh this one yeah you know it's not a bad idea the thing is, though, is that it wouldn't be factory. And, you know, in all reality, this ain't too bad, you know, because I just use it like this, you know, just put my finger right over the flipper tab. And since I already have the non-flipper, I think it's good to have one because flipping action is amazing on this thing. I mean, this one works really good. And you have the fuller. Now, this one's nowhere near as drop shutty. Maybe I just need to clean it. Is this one. This one is stupid smooth. But this one looks really cool because all the hardware and everything, and it matches the big daddy. All right, so we're going to talk about Kershaw. Kershaw. So I got Kershaw pulled up right here. Let me show you guys. Canada, man. I got Kershaw right here. But before we talk about Kershaw, we got to get Canada out of here. Man, it's so choppy and messed up. I almost feel like backing out and coming back in. 74 people in here. Okay, so Kershaw and zero tolerance. I don't know why Kershaw isn't putting their chips into what well, one. Okay, because they've been using 14C28M for a long time. They were like the one. I think they were the first ones to start using it. What's up, Journey? I think they were the first ones to start using it. And they do a decent job with it. But I don't know why they – okay, so they have that, that new knife, right? It looks so good. You know, you can reverse flick it. There's no assist on it. I forget the name of it. Uh, but it's not assisted. It's like 70 80 bucks, and I think it's D2. Why on earth are they using D2? Why aren't – and that's a, and it's their China-made knife. Think about that. Steel with D2 for $80 or $60, 70 $80, whatever the price is, the point is, is they should be using. They can make USA-made knives with 14C28N for $55, $65, yet the Chinese-made D2 knife in steel 
is that much, it doesn't make sense. It makes no sense. If you follow Kershaw and follow the knife community, then you know you're getting ripped off. Now, I'm not saying don't get that knife. I think the knife looks awesome. I almost bought one. But then I started thinking about it like, wait a second. Wait a second. I can get their Kershaw M390 for under $100 from USA Made. The Highball. Yes, thank you. The Highball XL. Why is that knife that much money made in China? Why isn't it? I don't I don't mind this made in China. I'd rather it be made in the U, uh, USA. But they have the opportunity. We've seen what they did with the knockout. We've seen what they did with the the uh, bare knuckle. Why aren't they, you know, putting their eggs in that basket, making USA made knives in 14C28N that are non-assisted, that are awesome. Think about how much they did really good with the bare knuckle and the knockout. Really good. There you go. That's why. <laughs> you guys ain't liking the live. Paper Tiger? Possibly. I just wish or I would love to see them take advantage of that. Now, they could still make them over there, right? But why is the price higher? That doesn't make sense to me. For less materials, cheaper materials, it's more money. What are we talking about? Now, let's check out some of the designs. So, this is zero tolerance. So, we're going to check out zero tolerance, then we'll go to Kershaw. So, I personally think that they these designs, the new designs, what they did was they went a little too fantasy, in my opinion. I think they shouldn't have went too crazy. Now, this 990, the one in the middle, I think it looks pretty cool. All the holes in the scales, I'm not a big fan of that. But, okay, whatever. I think they were, I don't know why they went that crazy. Um, this one, did, let me see what you guys see really quick before I keep going. Um, but this one, it's, I don't know. It's a little crazy for me, but that's the one. That, it doesn't have, uh, I think the back snaps in, it looks like, kind of, is that right? Is that the way it goes? It uh, this little back part snaps in kind of like the um, the marksman. That's the way it looks. If that's the case, that might be pretty cool. But I need to try it to find out. Now, what the hell happened? Oh, you son of a bitch! I don't know why it switched. There we go. Okay, so now if we go down here to the 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 blue one, this one, I'm not a big fan of this one either. They did the whole thing through it. I do like the, their um, subframe locks. I don't mind the clip. You know, the pop of blue, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I know it's going to be very light because of the carbon fiber. This might be kind of cool. I just think there's so many things they could have done. They went a little outrageous this year, which whatever. Hold on a second. Here's this. I wish I could make this bigger for you guys, but you guys, ah, oh, shit. You guys won't be able to see it. And I just messed everything up, I think. Let me bring it back to the stream yard and remove this really quick. I'm going to fix this. There we go. All right. But, um, but yeah, let me, let me get in Kershaw really quick. Let's check out what Kershaw is doing this year. And then we'll, we'll rant on them a little bit. Uh, damn it. All right, so here's the Kershaws this year. I think... They, they kind of shit the bed with the Kershaws this year. In my opinion, I, you know, it's just my opinion. I think this big guy right here on the right, I think this is dumb. I, I don't know anybody who's going to want to get that. These ones, they look like they're all their Walmart knives. That, that They seem like they went all out on their Walmart knives. I don't see that, that one, that XL, what is it, the Highball XL or whatever. I don't see that here. Let's see if I can find it. 
Now they're going to give me this shit. But anyways, here we go. I, oh, I see it right there. I can't get it to blow up, though, with you guys being able to see it. I'll just type it in. Screw it. Uh, damn it. Why is my computer so messed up? Kershaw. Is it the highball? Yeah, there we go. All right, let's look at images. All right, so here's the highball. This is a nice knife. Great design. I think they did really good on this one. Aside from the price and the steel. why It's a reverse flicking knife that is not big, right? It's um, If they did this in 14C28N, badass. I think they messed up the plunge grind a little bit. But they could have did it in steel and 14C. And This one's saying it's 55 bucks, But to me, $55? It's made in China, okay? It's made in China, D2 and steel. They did the bare knuckle in knockout for what, 65 bucks? I think I got my bare knuckle for 60 bucks. Um, the knockout, I think, yeah, the knockout, I think, was 60 bucks. That one had an assist on it, but you're talking USA made, 14C28N. Why is it the same price? I know they're, you know, they need their monies, right? They need their monies, but damn, guys, they, you know, they should be this year really throwing some chips in their USA made knives, in my opinion. I think that that would benefit them massively if they did like the bare knuckle two, the knockout number two. Um, they could have stuck with the same materials, tuned things up a little bit. They could have did the highball, USA made same materials right they they could have really went all in because people were loving those i screamed about them like crazy okay now and i don't understand why i don't know why that happened why they would use d2 over their 14c28n what like that sounds crazy to me but whatever then i would imagine they can get it for a pretty good deal now if you guys have anything to say about that subject Feel free, because next we are going to talk about geometry for blank. So, for a jet knife, a user, and a hard-use knife. What's up, Russ? Things are good, man. Chilling in the live. Having some fun with some friends. Always a good time at Needs Knives Live. Um... I would like them to make something like salt. Um, I just want them to do like, I don't know. I don't like their Walmart type knives. I, I know. I understand from a selling point of view and a money point of view, they're going to do what makes the money. I get that. All right. But at least drop a model for the, the, the community, because let's be real. The ones that sell at Walmart are the ones that that's their bread and butter. That's where they make their money. Their money doesn't come from the USA made lines. However, I still think though that that was, I can't imagine that the bare knuckle and the knockout didn't just like, cause think about it, they came out with it. Then they dropped them in M390. Oh, then they had exclusives here and exclusives there. They made a killing on those. Um, so geometry. Now this, I'll just go through really quick. Now, obviously, and this is based on just my opinion. And then I want to talk about a comment right after. So, in my opinion, a gent carry, okay, so a um, one that's in your, uh, what's it called, uh, a slip joint, a slip joint or a tiny little knife, you know, something that's, that's not hard use. It's just a little tiny razor, you know, you could even consider something like this, you know, just something small, light. Something that's only made for cutting, you know, you can cut apples and things like that. In my opinion, 10 thousandths behind the edge is like mandatory, if not thinner. So between 10,000 and less for behind the edge. The stock thickness, 90 thousandths, I think is maximum, maximum. I personally would rather see it at 60, 70 thousandths. 
for the spine. That's very thin, but that's slip joint thin. Now, obviously, I said 90 thousandths at the thickness, no, thickest. So if you're talking about a flipper or something like that, it's a little bit different. Some people don't consider flippers jet knives, but everybody's different. I do. You know, my jet knife is never going to be a slip joint. It'll always be some sort of locking knife. Now, a user, a user, a knife that's a user. One you actually use. It's your primary knife, your tool, your work knife. One you beat up on, you, you cut everything with. My opinion is 15 thousandths behind the edge. I don't think it needs to be thicker. Now, if it's 17 thousandths, no big deal. You know, and if the stock thickness is thin enough, then okay, we can be 20 thousandths behind the edge. But 15 thousandths, I think, is a great area. 120 thousandths stock thickness. That's basically Civivi. Civivi uses their stock thickness at most of their knives at 120 thousandths. I think that's a great thickness. It makes it very slicey. It makes the geometry fantastic. Now, if it's a little less, cool. If it's slightly more, okay. But right around that area, I don't think we need 160 thousandths um, and 30 thousandths behind the edge for a user. Hard use knife, a hard use knife. In my opinion, 20 thousandths behind the edge is a great thickness. Maybe even 18 thousandths because when you sharpen it, it's going to get to 20 thousandths. So 18 to 20 thousandths behind the edge. I think 20 thousandths is a great, great edge. There's some striders out there that are 15 thousandths behind the edge and they're hard use knives. Now, the stock thickness, I did a range with this one between 140 and 180 thousandths. I did that because there are going to be those outliers, the ones that are made for chopping, prying, uh, to be able to hold a thousand pounds on the spine, Demco 8020 type knives. 180 thousandths, I think, should be like the max. I think over that, we're starting to get ridiculous, you know, uh, I, you know, because. That's big. That's thick. At a certain point, it's like get a fixed blade, right? But still, if you want a hard use folder, a folding pry bar, a folding knife that, that can do anything, but it folds up, puts it in your pocket, I think 140 to 180 thousandths is great. And 20 thousandths behind the edge. Now, let me just say, this is just my opinion. Now, I don't want that to be like something like whoever made up that fucking rule with the the ounce per inch shit, the dumbest shit I ever heard of, that a knife should be uh, a, an ounce per inch or otherwise it's heavy. The reason why that doesn't make sense is because the longer you get, the heavier it gets. If you're talking about a three, so that, that rule works out if it's a three inch blade and less. That's the only time it works out. Like this knife. This knife is 3.1 inches. I'm surprised they were able to get this at 3.1 inches because it's steel. So with steel, the reason why they were able to is because this blade is stupid thin. So it, it is a very thin, compact knife. So they were able to do that. Now, if this was any bigger, any bigger at all, it just blew that out of the water, right? So once you start getting knives that are three and a half inch blade lengths, four inch blade lengths, titanium scales, you're never going to get the ounce per inch. When we're talking about micarta and carbon fiber, yeah. But to put a knife on a scale like that and say, oh, it, it's it's overweight because it's over an ounce per inch, whoever made that up had... It literally only deals in carbon fiber or something because that's, it's just never going to work. The bigger the knife gets, the bigger the handle has to be, you know, come on. Especially when we're asking for T8s, big stop pins and things like that. Don't get me wrong. I don't want a knife to be extremely heavy. I think it's good to, to try to balance that weight really good. And sometimes too heavy is obnoxious. However, too light is obnoxious too. Something that's so light, it feels like it's going to break. I don't want that. I, I'd rather have a knife that I can tell is solid rather than a knife that I squeeze and it's and it pinches together or, you know, bends and stuff. Um, 
this Picaro, man, this is a solid knife. I've, I've said this so many times, and I know a long time ago I used to talk a lot about it, and then I kind of stopped talking about it because I had it loaned out for a little while. But for people that like a big knife, a big knife, a full-size knife, and like a user, like it's not going to be the drop shutty, fall shut action, but you can reverse flick it because it does have the hole and it has a thumb stud for the thumb great action now the drop it's stiff it's not going to be you can drop it and i can loosen the pivot a little bit and make it fall shut or drop shutty but it's more of like the sabenza type right you can reverse flick it but on the close it's just it's more of the it's phosphor bronze it's not it's not bearings but from the user aspect, great sharpening choil, great plunge grind, stupid thin behind the edge, very thin blade stock. I think it's a hundred thousandths thick or something like that. It might be 120 at the thickest point, but from here forward, it's like 80, 90 thousandths thick. It's stupid thin. So it makes it a laser beam and it's D2, but in my opinion, if we're going to talk about the best company for D2, Civivi. Um, I know I, I beat up on D2 sometimes, but in all honesty, D2 is not a bad steal. It's fine, especially for the right price. Civivi did a good job with it, though. Um, I never seen any issues with Civivi's D2. I always thought it was pretty good. And if you use like a 600 grit edge, holy shit, does it get sharp. This thing is dangerously sharp like i can barely touch the edge and it just wants to just snag uh my skin stupid sharp um i guess we want to talk about that uh, ta, 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 ta. That's a massive cutout. You're talking about the this? Yeah, but you know what, though? It makes it, because it's big, it makes it where it's real easy to spidey flick and, you know, reverse. It, it's If you use it, it's such a great user. The ergos are – it's such a neutral grip. The ergos are so good on it, and it's stupid slicey. And you have a lot of blade length. So you never run out of blade length. It's a four-inch blade or almost a four-inch blade or something like that. Todd Carr says QSP does some good D2 too. I like seeing them do 14C28N because they're using it, which in my opinion is going to be better, but I'm not disagreeing that they don't do good D2, but they're using 14C. So and you guys know I love my 14C. So QSP using that steel, high five to them. That's smart. It's easy to heat treat. It, it's a good quality steel, and they bring it to you for a really good budget. But, yeah, I never had an issue with QSP's D2. I never did. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying I never had an issue with it. I've sharpened quite a bit of it. Jared got the Kaiser Squatch yesterday, and it's awesome. Hell, yeah. Hell, yeah. I actually had um, Kaiser get a hold of me. Which is which was kind of weird because I was already dealing with Mojave. Hey, Mama. I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Um, had my surgery. You can see my eyes all swollen because they, they busted through to my nasal cavity. I don't know if I told you that. Um, but, uh, yeah, swap devices and get back in here. What are you doing? So, yeah, Kaiser. So, they got a hold of me, which I've been dealing with Mojave Outdoors for you know, for a while and they send me, you know, basically anything I ask for and more, right. Um, which it's a good deal. Now I just recently got a discount code from them, which I, you know, when I made the video and I posted talking about it, I didn't make anything off of that, but we're setting up a deal with the needs knives, 10% off to you guys that I make a little tiny percentage. Now that's only through like like an, a gift card or whatever, so I can only basically use it. Um, I ha I'm having an implant put in, but they uh they had to punch through to my nasal cavity for whatever reason. I don't know if it was an accident or if they had to do it, but they did. And uh, so on the ninth, I'm going to get it put in, but I had to have the surgery to to get the old one removed. Um, 
But uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. So I'll make a little small percentage off of each time you guys use it. And then I can basically only use it to, you know, that money to either buy through their site or get like an Amazon gift card or something, right? That's all right. Whatever. I can always sell an Amazon gift card, but the point, but my little point is, is that with my links, which you guys fucking got to start using, man. Some of you guys do use it and I appreciate it. I really appreciate those of you that look at the links, but there's so many times where I'll do a review on a knife and then you guys would be like, oh, I bought it from White Mountain Knives. And I'm thinking like, why? I put a link in there for $10 cheaper. Like, why did you do that? And I don't mean like through the other site with my discount. I'm saying just Amazon, an Amazon link. It'll be to you in three days and it's cheaper than White Mountain Knives. Like I seen a knife the other day. Somebody said they bought it right after my review. It was like 56 bucks or something, or $53. But through my link, it was only $43. And I'm thinking like, why didn't you use my link, man? But Remember, guys, when I do a video on a knife, I try, and I know I was sloppy with it before, so it's probably more my fault than your guys's, but I am trying to work really hard to get all the links possible in every video now. So if I show five or six knives, I I'm going to do my best to get all the links in there. I've been requested so many times, and I did respond to somebody the other day. They were like, why didn't you put all the links in? And I had like 20 knives in the video. And I said, because it would have took me fucking two hours to do that. Like, I already spent six hours on the video. Another two hours, man. Come on. But they don't. He don't understand that. All he understands is he's trying to use a link to fucking support the, the, the channel. So my bad, right? My bad. But from now on, I'm putting forth the effort. And like the other day, man, it took me an extra hour on a video to get all those links in there. So if you guys are thinking about buying whatever I put in the video, whether like just like this, when I did the video um, with Julio, I I linked the, the little uh, driver set with this. It's like 50 bucks, right? Great deal, by the way. We have bits and a cool driver, 50 bucks with a with a roll. Anyways. Um, all right, Jason Brown. Sorry, I'm uh, rambling. Thank you for coming, bud. I appreciate you. And I appreciate your donation. Um, so while we left us for a girl, he will be back when either they break up or when he's not doing something with her. Hazing will definitely have to happen when he returns. We'll get his ass when he returns. I know some people prefer not to feed the Amazon beast. I get that. I get that. Um, but that's where I have affiliates, right? Now I actually have an affiliate with Mojave Outdoors. But in their like perspective, it'd be the same thing, right? Yes, Mojave Outdoors is an actual company that buys Kaisers and resells them for a discount or whatever. And it does benefit me. Now, the, the, the small benefit that I get from it, it's no more than what I'm going to get from the Amazon. So Amazon, it used to be pretty good. It used to be between 7 and 10%. That's what the, the affiliate, I don't even know if I'm allowed to tell you guys this, but anyways, it was like between like 7 and 10% is what you would make off affiliates. Now it's like 3%, but it still adds up, right? It's still a big deal. Like you guys might not realize, but if five people buy something in a day, right, that's still revenue coming in now what you guys might not realize and i know i'm not allowed to tell you guys this so i'll probably have to delete this video but as long as you guys use my link to get to amazon it doesn't matter what you buy so you guys don't have to buy my link basically there's a couple of you guys that already know that because i've spoken to you guys on the sidelines but like if you click my link and then go buy a couch bang but uh but you have to actually use my link to get there um meaning like to amazon you know how you get to amazon and then they show you like other things and then you're like oh let me check this out even though that's not what i linked you know it's just, they just pop up other alternatives and stuff same thing but anyways with the Amazon links, you only need one link and everything that goes into the shopping cart is tied to you and the link stays in the catch for 24 hours. Right. So I, I see what you guys get, you know, which that's why I, I'm trying to put more. 
I'm trying to put a little bit more effort into it for you guys to use. So if you guys do like the knives, whether it's in the first impressions or review, check out the links. Just see what I got down there. You guys might, if you guys are going to get it anyways. Now, I understand if I can't provide it because there are sometimes I can't provide it. No big deal. But if you can, can I use your link to buy a 55 gallon drum of water based lubricant? Absolutely. Absolutely. Just uh, just use the link to go there. Oh, you got the Kaiser Land? Uh, crazy action, but hate the scales. Man, you and Lefty EDC, man. You guys just need to hug because those scales are awesome. Um, no, I understand those scales are for certain people. You know, it's the same micarta as the, the, the bag lighter, the the mini bag lighter, but it's just different because this is the same micarta except for it's not frag. So do you have a problem with the frag or the actual micarta? Because in my personal opinion, the micarta is good. It's just, you might, you either like or don't like the frag. I like the frag. I think it's badass. I love the scales too. Um, uh, but I like frag. Uh, what's the a simple way to do that is change your Amazon bookmark to one of Jared's links. Don't use a search engine to get to Amazon. That's just lazy. Bang, there you go. Thank you, Fiend. I appreciate that. Yeah, so that's kind of the beauty of it. But I honestly don't think I'm supposed to say that shit i don't know who's gonna find out now or whatever but but that is kind of the beauty with it um i do see how many people actually click on it and never use it and that's a lot there's a lot of people but you know the more clicks i get the better too because the more opportunities and chances i get so that's why i try to put a lot in there but you guys gotta understand it's a lot of work to do that because I have to literally go, okay, so like I can't open up my, my affiliate, my, my affiliate link, like the page to get where I get the links. It's not like I can click there and then click over, click there and click over. I have to go and type it back in, open up the page, go into the page, put my, put what I'm looking for in, pull it up, copy and paste, then take it over, then close that out, go over to the video paste it in there then i have to go back and do the same thing over again it's not like it's just still sitting there waiting for me to type it in so it's a lot of work it really is um and maybe i'm very uh, illiterate to computers and i'm just not that good at it but so far that's the only way i figured out how to do it so it is what it is and i don't mind putting in the work um i'm just hoping you guys are using it so and I know I keep saying eventually I'm going to get shirts. I really want to get some shirts. I think that'll be really cool. Um, shit, I just want them for myself. Oh, man. Stasa23. I'm throwing Amazon on you, man. Somebody delete this comment. Get them out of here. Um, no, Stasa, I don't know if you have affiliates, but, man, you should. I don't know why you don't if you don't. Well, hopefully you do. But if not, we can talk about it later because you should definitely have some affiliates. Um, it's easy to get an affiliate with Amazon, especially with your channel, the way it is, you'd get it really quick. Um, Talica always needs a nap. Okay. So next thing I was going to talk about, um, oh, I found this interesting and I actually recorded a video. Um, I do too, man. I do too. And I want to get one with just like a big ass knife on it. I want to get like, I don't know, just do some cool, some cool stuff. Man, Stasi, you got to get on board, man. Got to get them affiliates. You got to, man. You want to. You want to. The way it works is as much work as you put into it, it's going to benefit you. The the least amount of work you put into it, you, you that's the return you're going to get. So we can talk about it after this live if you want to talk about it. Um, So. Um, this, I, I wound up recording a video on this subject, but I'm not going to post it. I don't know why I'm not going to post it, but I found it so fascinating. I started thinking about our ancestors, right? And I don't care what your ancestor lineage is. It can be Vikings. It can be West Africans. It can be, uh, Mayans. Doesn't matter when you think about them. Right. And I'm talking about a long time ago, all the way through history. So it doesn't matter what time period. 
I will, Stasa. I will. Um, it doesn't matter. Yeah, go check out Stasa 23's channel if you haven't already. Um, it doesn't matter what time period you're talking about, but when you think about it, would they carry, right? Would they carry on them? Really think about it. They they carried leather, right, to carry their other things. So like a bag, a pouch that was made out of buffalo hide or whatever, you know, kind of hide, rabbit fur, whatever. Then they had their little tools on them, right? Their little tools to, like to build a trap. Their little tools to build a fire. Their, you know, depending on what part of history, you know, they had different tools on them. They had their EDC on them, right? And I start thinking about like through history, right? Through history, our EDC has only um gotten uh I don't want to say futuristic, what's it called? Like upgraded, basically. It's the same shit. It just upgraded. Like we still carry lighters, right? Back then it was just a different type of lighter. Um, we still carry our knife. We still carry our, you know, just the things that we personally need to, to make our day better. Um, my mama wants a shirt. Um, right. But, but, but think about though, like that, why we love, the EDC, right? Why it's so important to us. Yes, it's so useful to us, right? And anybody who, everybody carries EDC. Everybody, your girlfriend, your mother, your aunt, your uncle, everybody does. It's just, what is it, right? But it's embedded in our blood and DNA to do that, right? And I start thinking about that. Like, that's why it's so fascinating, I think, to me, is because, like, my ancestors, it would have been important important for their survival right like we today are very privileged to, for it. it's not important to our survival now don't get me wrong we still need the things for our survival but we might not necessarily have to carry them on our person right we can survive without carrying them on our person because somebody else out there already has it that's really the point is that there's so many people that have it that you don't necessarily have to carry it but if you do, you're the you're the guy, right? You're the important one. But my point is, is a long time ago, our ancestors would have needed it just to survive. So now that is passed down into our DNA to carry an EDC pouch on our side, to carry our knife in our pocket, to carry our flashlight, our little pry bar, our whatever, right? And um, I just found it fascinating when I start thinking about like, like say, my great grandpa, right, uh, traveling from up north down, you know, through Canada and stuff into America, like the things he carried for his EDC, you know, and uh, the people that would have uh, been anybody's ancestors, you know, like if you were a Mayan, you know, um, descendant, like the things that they would have around their environment because it would have been for the environment. And I think, uh, I just think it's so fascinating when, when I was saying, I made a whole video about it, but, um, I, I, I don't know. I probably won't post it because, you know, it's just kind of a subject to talk about. It's not really, uh, a video, you know, it's more of just a knife talk, which I always, uh, I, I like the knife talk episodes and I have a whole bunch of them in the playlist. And if you guys don't know about the playlist, I, I remind people all the time in the comments check out my playlist because people ask me a question. It's like, man, I got 10 videos on that subject. Look at my playlist because in my playlist, I have sharpening videos, knife talks in the top tens. That's where you'll see top fives, top tens, and those type of videos. I have knife versus knife where I battle knives together, but you can on knife reviews, first impressions, you know, just a whole bunch of, uh, and even the lives are in there. There's one just for lives. MC's knife talks. So that was mine, man. I'm the knife talk. He does, uh, what is it? Knife guy. That's what he does. I do knife talks. His is knife guy episode. Um, like my grandfather used to say, same shit, different toilet. You got that right. You got that right. Okay. So uh, reading a book by Brian Green right now called until the end of time talks about similar stuff for natural selection and how our language and behavior have evolved. That's awesome. It's fascinating. Do you have any MC roasting playlists, man? I should, 
I should, but I don't. I don't. Uh, but uh, I should, though. I should. Um, <laughs> that'd be hilarious. That'd be so funny. Can you imagine if he came to my channel and checked out my playlist and then he looked down and says, Metal Complex Roasting Playlist. What the fuck? Can you imagine? <laughs> he wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> He'd have to click on it. He'd have to click on it. Um, I had a joke written down. I'm going to tell you guys one of them because he never came in here. He was scared. He was scared. I told him to come in here and he never did, but I'll tell you one of the jokes that was in the thing. And just to be honest though, if he did show up, I probably still use it because I thought it was kind of a good one. Uh, might be even the best one. How are you feeling since your surgery? My eyes swollen. Um, I feel all right now, but man, the past three days man it's been it's been pretty tough i've had such a face ache and a headache my jaw hurts it's hard to eat the stitches wound up ripping out um you know surgery right but my my eye got a black eye it's swollen my face hurts really bad when i um smoke pot no i don't smoke any pot anymore i used to not that i wouldn't but no not really um i don't really do anything to be honest i i drink a couple times a year I might take a hit of pot every, you know, now and then, but no, not really. Um, but, um, what the fuck was I talking about? I don't remember now. Damn it. Brain fart. Um, <clears throat> what the hell was I just talking about? Not, oh yeah. Metal complex. So the, what, how'd the joke go? It was like, what, it, what does, <laughs> what does slicey dicey's comedy and metal complexes channel have in common they're both a laughing stock ah! <laughs> oh that would have been a good one just because it, it it brought uh slicey dicey into it teeth pain is the worst the fucking worst and i've told stories on here before where i've knocked myself unconscious because of infections because I have really big roots, hence why they had to punch into my nasal cavity, right? Um, I have giant roots, and it goes deep into my bones. And so when I had an infection in my nerve, it was so close to my brain. That wasn't this time. This was a long time ago. Not even that long ago, but a while ago, a few years ago. And it was so bad. Like I was damn near blind. Like I couldn't see. The pain never stopped, and it went on for so long. Um, I had a hot tooth. And start beating my head against a brick wall. Woo! I don't even want to talk about it. Um, I always feel like it was a waste of money. Wait, I always feel like it was a waste of money the next day after drinking. That depends. Like, so I used to feel like that. Um, but I don't anymore because anytime I go out with friends or family to drink, I can't, it's not, I'm not saying I deserve it. I'm saying I don't do it that often. So I enjoy myself. So I don't have any regrets the next day. To me, it's like, I'm like, man, I had a good time with some family and friends and I rarely do it because I am so goal oriented now. Like my mind is only on perfection. My mind is only devoted on getting better. I'm like a fucking missile right now, like with everything. And that's how I try to treat everything, whether it's my health, work, uh, the, the channel life, just period. So every once in a while, it's nice to, to decompress, hang out with some family, not worry about anything, turn the missile off and then, you know, get back to action afterwards. That doesn't mean I veer off from my path. That doesn't mean I, you know, do, you know, do anything bad. I just, you know, I just decompress, hang out with some family, enjoy myself. But I'm right back on that missile the next day. Like, I don't let it let me skip a beat. I might sleep in, you know, because I drank and I was up late or something. But like I said, that's only a couple times a year. So, um, so I want to talk about grit and why it's important. Why grit is important. Talking about an edge. And uh, what time is it? Uh, 8.39. I, oh, man, I didn't write down any stories. Um, we'll have to just come up with something. But grit, why it's important. So some people like a toothy grit, right? A low grit. Low grit to me is like three, 400 grit. Medium grit is like 
five, six, seven, eight hundred grit. Fine grit is, you know, obviously above that. So it'd be like a thousand to two thousand and up, right? A mirror polish is obviously fine, but that's not really grit, that's polish. So when we're talking about sharpening, between 300 and 1200 grit is basically going to be your grit. Because after 1200, from 1200 to 200, you're just refining that grit into a polish, basically into a cloudy finish. After that, it gets to a polish. But why is it important? So when you're talking about, so depending on what you do, right, that's what it's going to boil down to. What do you do? What do you use your knife for? Because if you're the type of person that cuts certain things like straps, plastic straps, ropes, belts, things like that, then you're going to want a low grit because you want that teeth kind of like a saw. And if you guys don't like, if you guys ever used a serrated blade, think about cutting bread. Think about a nice, big, fluffy loaf of bread. Trying to cut that with a sharp chef knife, it just smashes it, right? It just like, you know, a big old loaf of bread. You try to cut it with a regular V grind edge. It's, it's hard. Take a serrated blade. And it just zzz, 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 right through it, right? Same concept with your pocket knife. If you have a lower grit, medium grit, you have basically a serrated edge to an extent, right? So that will, when you get behind a strap and you go to pull the strap, those teeth will embed themselves in that rope, plastic strap, whatever it is, bite into it so that when you pull it, it's not just going to slip out from behind it. It's going to cut it. Now, if it was a fine edge, depending on the thickness, you had a good chance it's going to slip out. So when you're talking about cutting cardboard and things like that, now a fine edge will do good at first, but after a while, depending on geometry too. Let me just be clear. Geometry plays a big part in cutting cardboard. But um, but after a while, your edge will start getting slick and then you'll need to strop it or hone it to bring back a little bit of bite. But if you have a low grit, you know, it, it continues to have bite always. Even if it starts getting dull, it'll still have some bite. Then if you strop it, you knock the burr off. Now, I'm not saying there's not a place for fine edges, right? Because fine edges can still do great with cardboard, great with tape, great with, you know, opening packages and things like that. So does a low grit too, but serrations come in pretty handy, but I prefer a single edge type. I do too, but they are very, very important. And I understand it. Like if I was only going to cut straps all day, give me a serrated blade. Now the problem with serrated blades is the like the maintenance and keeping up with it is more a struggle than just a regular v grind that winds up becoming the issue not saying that it's not possible or you can't tune it up because there are ways to, to keep your serrated blade going and i'm going to do a video on it here pretty soon you know um the benefits and negatives to a serrated blade and how to keep up with it um Where'd that go? Bread gluten forms a sort of a gluey, foamy structure that you need to saw through. Right. All right. And there's a lot of things out there like that that just seem to do better with an aggressive edge. And just like, like certain things are going to do a little bit better with a polished edge. Not many, though, to be honest. I can't, there's not many things that a polished edge just does so much better on. I suppose you could say like wood carving, something like that, maybe. Um, certain things, you know, um, so stuff like that, maybe. And it just depends on that too. I'm just a computer or that's the meme anyways. <laughs> uh, you're, you're a good computer. I'll tell you that you're awesome at it. Way better than me, man. I like six to eight hundred grit most of the time. I like some teeth to an edge. I do too. And don't get me wrong, I love a good polished edge. I do. I think it looks good. And with the right steel and heat treat, you can have a damn nippy uh, polished edge. Like one that it's like if the teeth are so fine that when you touch it, it's like, wow, this is sharp. 
with a toothy finish though, or let's say with a medium grit, like 600 to 800 grit, you can get the same thing, right? Same thing without the polish. So without the extra work. So it winds up being that the teeth are the same way. So it's the same level of sharpness. The only difference is that the teeth are a little bigger. So when you touch it, you're like, whoo, those are some big teeth with the, uh, with the polish dodge, they're just tighter together. But, uh, but yeah, I like them both. But my biggest thing is, is I want bite. I want the edge to have some bite to it. I want to touch it and it be sticky to my finger. You guys hear that? That's it sticking to my finger. I like that. That's what I like in an edge. I don't like to, like this one, I need to do this one soon. But this one was, this one did have a lot of bite, but I did polish it. But now... Like I can, it's sharp. Don't get me wrong. I could shave hair with this still, but you see it's getting slick and it is a uh, CPM M4, but it does take a very aggressive polished edge when it's fresh. This one's not fresh. I like 600 grit teeth on my S90V, but I like 1200 on my M4 and M390. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah, see, 1200 grit is actually a safe number or safe grit for M390 because soft or hard, 1200 grit will do good on M390. That's kind of the beauty with 1200 grit with M390 is that it's safe. It's a safe bet, right? Like if you go higher, you do have a chance of it getting slick if it's soft. If it's good heat treat, it'll just get sharp or not sharp, but you know, it'll, it'll stay good. Right. It'll just get polished and get very, very sharp um, or feel very, very sharp. But there are a lot of chances that it's going to fall off. But if you stay at 1200, you, you got to the level of which it's going to do great. No matter what. Work Sharp claims that the sharpener can do serrated blades just by hitting the back side with the belt. Not sure about that. Here, the Spyderco Sharp Maker is really... So, okay, so this is the thing. What they're trying to say, and I'll explain it, and I've showed this in a video before. With a serrated blade, the way you sharpen it is the opposite side of the serrations. I have one here somewhere. I think. Um, uh, I'd have to pull it out. Oh, I think it's right here. Oh, no, it's kind of stuff. Damn it. It's back here somewhere. Anyways, so you know the front face of serrations, the back side, the flat side, that's what you sharpen. Serrations are made to be sharpened from the back side. What you're doing is you're just sharpening back the edge to expose because you know how a serration goes at an angle, just like a V-grind, right? Just like a V-grind, it goes, this ain't big enough. Just like a V-grind, it goes at an angle. So what you're doing is you're sharpening back this steel to expose the fresh angle. And then you knock the burr off and you have a fresh fresh serrations. So yeah, you can do that for a while. If you don't do that or keep up with it, you're going to have to sharpen the serration side. Because after a while, when the teeth start breaking off and it gets really messed up, there's only so far you can go before you have to put on new serrations. So I don't know about that that uh that system sharpening the actual serrations but you'll be able to sharpen it until they're gone all right good night mom i love you thank you for coming in i'm infp but also autistic so not sure how that affects it i don't know what you're talking about affects what Um, I can't wait for Gritomatic to come out with that attachment. That attachment's going to be the shit, guys. We're going to be able to do, like, that brings that work sharp, sharp system to another level. When that thing drops, I got him on my email list. I can't wait for them to email. Think about just contacting him and like, listen, guys, send it to me. I'll do a video on it. You know, it'll be a win-win. Ha ha, Jerry. Sorry, we're way off track. Yeah, I'm sorry, too. Um, means you guys aren't listening to me. I'm just joking. But that gritomatic piece, I, I hate to even show you guys because then you guys are going to buy it before I get a chance to get it. And then I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be mad, guys. All right, I'll pull it up just to show you guys again, just in case if you guys didn't get to see it. All right, so 
But all I got to say, man, is I better get it before you guys. I better get it before you guys because I'm going to be upset if not. And I just mean that because I want to do a video on it. Somebody else showed it to me. Bang! A four-inch stone holder for the Workshop Precision Guided Sharpener. This will let you be able to use any of Gridomatic stones, which are diamond plates, Veneve diamond stones, um, Gridomatic stones, aluminum oxide stones, whatever stones, because Gridomatic sells Veneves. They sell diamond plates. They sell Gridomatics. They sell all kinds of different stones. But it'll be a four-inch stone holder where you can get any stone and use it on the work sharp. That's a game changer, a game changer for the, the work sharp. So I can't wait. I can't wait. I, I'm going to get it. Or I'm definitely going to review it. Um, it looks like it's built pretty good. I'll be honest. It looks, yeah, Ian, exactly. Holy shit. So as soon as that comes out, I'm hoping I get it so I can show it to you guys and tell you guys how good it is. I'm going to try to get some granomatic stones along with it because I don't I, oh you know what I do have a couple granomatic stones I got like three or four granomatic stones that will fit in it so I can at least test it on those but hey knife sergeant what are you talking about you already have one how'd you get one let's talk about this what are you talking about bro you already have one are you just trying to be an ass to me or what don't be, don't be lying now. You really already have one? That's awesome if you do. I don't think I'll be able to, I, I don't know if I'll be able to get a link. Um, if it's on Amazon, I can. Let's, let's find, I'm going to find out really quick now. Um, uh, Attic Workshop uh, Sorry, guys. Sorry. I don't know if you guys could still hear me. I, I don't know what happened when I tried to click on the Gridomatic thing. It went out. That's my boy. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> But uh, he went to Gridomatic. We'll return shortly. Yeah, I did. But they're not. They're saying they're not available yet. I don't think. I think. I don't remember just now when I looked. But now everything's gone. So fuck it. Anyways. Um, but that thing will be a game changer. I think Knife Sergeant's just messing with us. If he does have it, I'd love to. Uh, knife Sergeant. Knife done pissed him off and he left us. <laughs> oh, man, that's hilarious. Man, I only got through one page. I had three pages of stuff to talk about, but I'm going to have to skip through a couple things. Oh, man. This is about a commenter. What's up, Richie B? So... This is just kind of funny. Um, I found, you know, sometimes people leave comments. A lot, I get a lot of mean comments. I don't care about those. But this guy made a comment. I made a video, right, in the beginning of the video. So the video was about, see, you were messing with me. See, I left for nothing, man. I got mad and left for nothing. I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> um, so I, um, I made a video saying what my favorite steals were right my my favorite steals well in the beginning of the video i made a comment like starting off the video like just so you guys know i know nothing about metallurgy 
compared to people that know metallurgy, right? I'm basically giving homage or, you know, paying my respect to the people that have been in metallurgy for 20 years. I'm not a metallurgist. I'm a knife sharpener. I'm a knife user. I've been using and testing steels for a couple of years and sharpening them and really testing out different heat treats and different company steels, so on and so forth. So I feel like I know a little bit. I know more than the average guy walking down the street, um, as, unless if he's a metallurgist, but I don't know shit with somebody that's been in the business for 20 years to somebody that actually forges metal and does it for a living. Right. Obviously. And, um, you know, but you never know what you can learn from somebody, right? Because that guy might also be only consistent with one steel might not be a knife sharpener, so on and so forth. But the point was, was that I was basically paying respects to the people that actually really know their shit. And he left me a comment because that's the beginning, right? I'm going on to say like that my experience and what, where I'm getting my information from the guy says, uh, as soon as I heard you say, I know nothing about metallurgy, he goes, I'm out. And it's like, you're that's dumb, right? That's dumb as hell. It's like my, my remark was, I know nothing about metallurgy or uh, I literally know nothing about metallurgy compared to somebody who's a metallurgist, somebody who does it for a living, somebody who's been in the business for 20, 30 years. It's like, so, and this is based on my experience and my opinions with pocket knife steel. Man, you got a head on your shoulders to, to say, oh man, if he says he doesn't know anything compared to a metallurgist, I, I don't want to see his video. <laughs> <laughs> because two years of sharpening knives pretty much professionally isn't, isn't, you know, enough for me and testing steels for two years, you know, just, that's not enough, right? You better be the best metal or just ever for me to take your opinion on knife steels. You're an idiot, right? <laughs> oh man. Not for being social, but for having a lack of sense. Yeah. All it tells me is that that's rare, but that doesn't shock me. So I took, wait, so I took take test. I got an issue. I don't know what that means. Um, but, um, yeah, I thought that was like, I, I wound up making a comment back. And I said that I said, I said, basically like, um, yeah, I'm saying that I've been doing, this for two years and compared to somebody who's been in metallurgy for 20 years for their whole life. Yes. I know nothing compared to that person and I'm paying respect to that person and saying, and, you know, I'm being humble basically, right? I'm being humble saying they know more than me, but from my experience and what I've been doing for the past two years, this is what I like. This is my favorite. And it's like, and if you, can't understand that from that first sentence of me explaining that this ain't for you anyways, man, this video is not for you, but, uh, but yeah, so I got a Migaron knife on the way guys, pretty pumped about it. Pretty pumped. Um, I would show you guys a picture right now. Let me see. Maybe I can, because that would be awesome to show you guys. Let me see if I can, I wonder if I can just pull it up. Migaron. Explain it right. Hmm. It's the new knife. Um, yeah, I don't think that's it. I think I'd have to go to Instagram. But yeah, anyway, so soon I will have that on uh, the channel. I should have it any day now. I'm going to do an unboxing. I'm actually pretty excited about it. Because I've been wanting to um, to check out one of those knives. I, I've never checked one out, first of all. And it's uh, something that I think looks really good. It looks very interesting, in my opinion. So I can't wait to check it out. I'm going to pull one up right now for you guys, hopefully. There we go. Let's go to here. Let's go to here. All right, so here is, I'm going to share this with you guys. Oh, no, I got to go share. Sorry, share. 
Share, share screen. Sorry, guys, give me one second. Chrome tab. This will only take two seconds. Okay, here we go. So, oh, I had it up there. Bang. All right, so this is one of the knives that I do have on the way. I personally think it looks amazing. Uh, the one on the left and the one on the middle, it'll be one of these. Can you guys see that? I think you guys can see it. Yeah, you guys can see it. So look at the milling on it and the carbon fiber. It looks beautiful, right? So can't wait to get my hands on one of these and actually test it out. So I'm going to test the steel out, see how I like the steel. Obviously, the action, sharpening, ergos, everything. The blade shape's really cool. It's kind of a straight back. Right. Um, I, I'm sure it's labeled as a drop point, but if you look at the spine, it is pretty much a straight back or almost at least. Did he just flip that? How did he open that? Just oh no, he reverse flicked it. But if you look at the blade, it's pretty much a straight back. So that will be awesome. Here's another one. Very, very cool. And if you look, this one's got some blue and black carbon fiber but the thumb stud is weird on this one i'm not sure what's up with that thumb stud let me go down just a little bit he's got some knives with kaiser i believe yeah with kaiser so but yeah can't wait to check that out very sharp design right um i think uh what's up william it is refreshing to see a straight back, Tony. I agree because, you know, we see a lot of designs, but you don't see a lot of straight backs, really. You know, you see every once in a while we see a straight back, but you know the one thing I don't like about the straight backs we usually see? Bad geometry. Like the, the Ganzo FH11 and FH12 was very close to a straight back. You don't see them very often, and they're usually poor geometry. That one looks like it's probably going to be pretty good. Um, kind of looks like my TS-49. You think so? Uh, I mean, the TS-49 has a dual grind, and I think that one's bigger, but I can see what you're saying. Looked like cycling gloves. I wear some when I drive. They come in handy for wiping mirrors off, too. E straight backs just reminding you of Japanese tantos, but when they're done right. So if you think about it, Q and Fiend, think about a drop point, but just a straight back. So where, because the belly, I know what you're saying, because I kind of agree. Certain straight backs, their belly is just too round, right? It just rounds up. But there is a way to go like this and then taper it up. There's also a way where, like, it's a, basically a straight back, then right at the tip, it barely goes down. Personally, excuse me, I like a drop point better, but I, I still like um, straight backs. And straight backs were made to be rope cutting, hard use, basically a, um, an all terrain tough knife. Drop points were more of like the jack of all trades, while straight back was more of a work knife. Not saying. Drop points weren't work knives, I'm just saying. Um, next subject. Uh so I know I get on plunge grinds a lot, but I just want people to understand because I know there's a lot of custom knife buyers out there. The one time when you can be when, in my opinion, you can be forgiving about a plunge grind is on a custom knife. And you know, I forget to mention that sometimes that you know, with a custom knife, it is a lot more difficult for the person when he's grinding the blade to grind that plunge grind perfect he might not have a certain type of grinder or however he's grinding the blade to do that specific type of plunge grind it, it might be a lot more difficult and he's doing it by hand but when we're talking about production knives that are made in a cnc machine i think it's safe to say we want good plunge grinds right but when it comes to custom knives, the one scary thing is that um, Night Logical, see you later, bud. Thanks for joining us. Um, 
Uh, straight backs often make great choppers because of the weight of the tip. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why, when, like, with cutting rope, you could put a lot of force down into that belly. And it was evenly distributed across that spine. But um, but with the plunge rind thing, we can be a little bit more forgiving with the with custom knives. However, though, the one bad thing is though is that if you buy a custom knife and you spend a lot of money for it, then you sharpen it and you get a smile, it does make it look ugly. So personally, like with me, I would try to look for one that has a decent plunge grind so that I don't run into that if I'm gonna use if it's gonna be a user. Like if you're just gonna keep it, hang on to it, baby it, and then sell it later, who cares? Um, okay, so using catchy titles. So I wanted to talk about this because I, I wasn't doing it enough in the beginning with the channel. And I feel like I've lost a little bit with the channel, the places where I could have gained more views and more everything, right? Because like, say if I say Kubi Raven review, right? Kubi Raven review. You just see it as a review when there is so much more information I want to tell you that's in this video. Right. And if you guys don't know, all my videos, I try to teach something in the videos, something. Right. It doesn't necessarily have to be about the knife or knives. It can be about working on knives. It can be how to do this, how to fix that, whatever. But the point is, is that I try to do that. But in a video, there might be something that I do in the video that you won't know unless if you watch the video or there might be something really badass about the knife that if you only knew, if you only knew, you'd probably watch the video to at least find out. So I am going to try to start adding a little bit more catchy titles in my titles to hopefully get you guys to click on it. Um, I think if I put the money down for a custom, I wouldn't use it. Just admire. And that's what I mean. If you're going to, if right, you know, so a lot of people are going to do that because it's like, why would I use that when I can use this $100 knife? So I completely get that. And that's what I mean. Like you can be more forgiving, especially if you're not going to use it. But some people do say, I'm buying this custom knife because it's being made to my standards with the materials I want. I'm never going to sell it. And I want to enjoy it. All right? I, that's why I'm getting it. So in that case... Then try to make sure you get a knife that can be sharpened and still look good. Because that's the point. You don't want Who wants a $1,000 knife that after the first sharpening, it looks like shit, right? It's like, make sure it'll look good. But you can be a little bit more forgiving on custom knives. Can confirm clickbaity tiles work? I know you can, Knife Sergeant. You're the clickbaiting bastard out there. Everybody know. I'm just joking. I'm <laughs> just joking. But yeah. and. I've, you know, I've done it. I've dipped into it. Um, however, not as much as I should have. I should be better with that. I should be better with the clickbaity titles. Now, I want to speak on, because I've gotten some great reactions and poor reactions after I read this comment. Mojave Outdoors is in here. What's up? Hi, Jared. First time to your stream while you're streaming. Loving your video. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Mojave Outdoors. Definitely. Hey, Fiend, put a link into Mojave Outdoors for me, please. Definitely check out Mojave Outdoors. They're a huge supporter of Neves Knives. And you can definitely get your Kaisers from there. Lots of discounts. Awesome knives. You guys already know I'd be loving the Kaisers. And Mojave Outdoors is a great place to get them. So, Hopefully, we can get a link in here and get you guys to, to click on it if you guys want to check out some awesome, awesome knives. My sure grow of Quantum has broken in beautifully, and the double clutch doesn't even matter to me because it just glides right past it. Well, Tyler, that's like that's kind of the thing with that knife, just like with any knife, right? You're used to it. Like When you first use a knife, sometimes people are like, oh, you know, there's this thing, right? Like There's this thing. But then after you've had it for a couple weeks and you use it and you flick it, you get used to that thing. And sometimes you start enjoying that little detail that was a hiccup at first. And with that knife, yeah, I don't like the double clutch thing. I'll be honest. I really don't like that double clutch on that churro. However, I've learned to get past it because I just hold low, drop it, and go like that. So you, you learn to get past it and you find its action, right? The way its action works. Clickbaity is pretty acceptable today's climate. 
Just don't be out. Right. I agree. I agree. Don't, don't say something that's not true. And I'm not saying that I'm going to do that. I'm saying I'm going to try to say something that is true to, to, to hook you guys in. Hell yeah, dude. Try some clickbaity title types. Your regular followers will catch up to your views anyways, but it might bring. That's my point. That's what I'm about to say, Daniel. Thank you for bringing that up. So, okay. So I do these videos and Mojave Outdoors, um, you know, like with some of their stuff, when, when, they, when companies send me knives or I buy knives or I have knives, the review is the smallest video it's going to get. Not saying the review won't get a lot of views, but I'm going to do 10 other videos with that knife. I'm going to do top 10s, best cutters, best blade shapes, uh, best handle material, best action, whatever. I love doing those videos. I love doing those videos. One, people love it. That like. Those get the most views. Like if I showed you guys right now, like I had a video the other day within like 12 hours, it got almost 4,000 views or something versus a review that's going to get say 1500 or something. Right. And I'm saying in that amount of time, right. And, or 600 views, whatever, doesn't matter. The point is, is that it's a lot more and it brings in subs. It brings in people from the, from the world into the community and people love it. People love those videos. Now you always get the guy that says, um, you know, oh, I've seen these same knives in your past five videos or whatever, which isn't necessarily true. Like, yeah, you'll see like two knives or something that's been in multiple videos, but there are other knives in the video too. It's a mixture. And if I'm saying that this knife is amazing, right? This knife's amazing. Well, then when I do an action video or a uh, uh, grind video. If I already said that knife was amazing, why would it not end up in that type of video? Unless if I'm a fucking liar, right? <laughs> so those videos get the most attention. And that's why I like, I, I personally love those videos, but the beauty is, is that I love doing them and they get the most attention and you guys love them. And the thing is, is that it's not lying, right? It's not, it's, I'm yes, I'm pulling in subs. Of course, I'm pulling in subs. I'm trying to grow a channel. But at the same time, I'm not lying. Do you know how long it takes me? If if I if I say 10 knives are the best action, it's going to take me four hours to pick those knives out with me sitting here, like, taking two knives going, which one's better? You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm. I'm not the guy who can just pick up the knives and make a title around it. I I have to make sure it's something that I actually believe. Now, I try to be careful with my words. Instead of saying best, I'll say great. Because great doesn't mean best. Great means great. It's really good. It's awesome. It's amazing. Best means better than everything else. So sometimes like the best thing might be... Um, it just depends, but thanks. It can keep something I want, but can't, wait, thanks. It can keep being something I want, but can't afford. Good luck with healing and be careful. Thank you. Um, the only Shuro I know that has a double clutch is the quad. It is the other one, like my two Shuros. The detent is so early, you never feel it. Now you can hold it to the top of the tippity top of that lock bar, and it's past the detent. Um, so I fell down the stairs. Oh, this is who you were talking to. I went to the doctor's today and found out I have a traumatic patellar bursitis. Oh, I've had that. So just have to wrap it up. My eyes. Yeah, I had a bursitis so big that it was literally the size. It, it was like, I can't even explain to you how big it was. It was ridiculous. And I had it for over a year. It was really big. Like it, my, I looked deformed for about a year and I almost drained it myself. I almost cut it open. I still, if I rub my elbow, I actually still have little balls, but it's actually ligaments or like bone. I think it's chips of bone in my elbow. Um, and if you guys want to hear that story, it's actually kind of messed up. Finally invested in some good quality torch bits from Weeham. I don't know why I didn't just do that from the start. For sure. Uh, I say that all the time. Get Weeha bits. You will spend so much money buying bullshit bits. 
Bypass those. Bypass those. Get Weha. It's hardened steel. It's so much better quality. They fit so much better. They last so much longer. They're not that much more money, but good quality tools for good quality tools, right? If you want a good quality tool in your pocket, then you should be using a good quality tool to work on it. I'm not saying if you don't have the money not to go and get yourself some little Husky bits for $7 that you can replace because they are lifetime warranty. I'm not saying don't do that. I have these things all over the house. But they do strip out very easily. And now that I, after buying, say, eight of these and laying them around everywhere, I rarely use them. I do use them sometimes, but rarely. Because over time, I've invested in a lot of Weehaws. So now I have Weehaws everywhere. Best is a word which annoys me so much. It is utterly meaningless, devoid of context, and is different for every perspective. Right, right. That, and that's kind of my problem with it, too. My problem with it is that it's hard for me to say, like, say it and mean it. Like, because, well, one, if I say it today, you can bet in 10 minutes it's going to change. Like, I'm like, man, this is the best knife I've ever felt in my life. And if you hear me say that, the best knife I've ever felt in my life, write that date down because that's crazy. Now, because I felt so many amazing knives, it's hard for me to say that this is the best one out of everything. Now, if that did happen in 10 minutes, I'll probably disagree with myself and say something else is better. It constantly changes. My mind constantly changes. That's why, man, like people that say this is my top three, this is my top five, hats off to them, man, because that's like the hardest thing. Because to me, like if you ask me, what's your top three favorite knives? I'd say, for what? <laughs> for what? What am I doing? Am I in the jungle? Am I running from the police? Am I am I working in construction? Am I digging up? What am I doing? Because there's so many great knives. And if you're just like for just basic EDC, you know, I'd be, you know, I, I, I it'd be so difficult for me to do it because there's my top three favorite action knives. There's my top three favorite user knives. There's my top three favorite um, tough knives favorite slicers, favorite small knives, favorite, you know, it's just, there's so many. And now that I get over, wait, now that I can't get over the Shiro, I really want a custom division. I mean, a full custom by Sergey. Sergey. It's awesome, but not even in the realm of possibility for me. Yeah, me too. I know what you mean, man. There's a lot of knives out there that would be so amazing to have, but are just way out of the possibility it's kind of like that those sg customs that's out of the possibility for me but i still go and look you know i look at them and i drool and i want one but they're just they're way out of the question man but man they look badass um i don't know they might not be that badass so because i've never tried one and to be honest i've never even heard of anybody who's tried one so it's hard to recommend something or to know if I'm going to love it. If I've never, I've never even seen anybody flip one or, or I've seen the maker, but I mean like a knife reviewer, I've never seen a knife reviewer open one up and say, you know, all oh, the fit and finish is good. The hardware looks good. The action is amazing. You know, um, I've never seen that, but looking at the knife, I like the aesthetics. I like the look. It's kind of like when everybody's like, you know, I have to like the looks first. That knife has me on looks. It's doing all right. Um, it's doing all right. My face is still a little swollen. I'm trying not to uh, go too crazy with my nose. Um, but uh, but it's going all right. The pain's finally today. I'm finally not in a lot of pain. But up until last night i was in a lot of pain i tried not to show it but holy shit man my head was killing me my face my, my everything was killing me. but that's how healing goes you know you're in pain when you heal jared i'll send you my sg to check out keep in mind i haven't gotten it yet i'm excited for you man i'm excited i just you know what i'm just hoping and i mean this in a way because man i'd hate to be the like the reason like 
I know you didn't get it just because of me because you probably like the way it looks too, but you know, I did shout it out. So I just really hope that when you get it, you're like, I love this thing. I hope it's one of those knives that you're like, damn it. This thing is so good. I hope it's like that. I really do. And you know, man, whew, that'd be so awesome. Right. And I know you're hoping for that too, but I'm especially hoping for it. <laughs> um, what else is I going to talk about? So th this is just a quick little thing. My grail knife was and is quantum and I can't be happier. And I'll be honest, right when I got it, I was upset because it just was so hard to open. It wouldn't rip my finger. Yeah, the, it's, the flipper tab's not like the other ones. I got one here. Um, I should just pull it out to show everybody, but I think people know what the what you're talking about. But the Quantum doesn't have a regular Shurik or off flipper tab, which does make it a little weird. Now, once you get used to it, you adjust to it, and it's great. It is. It's an awesome knife. However, sometimes I think people have a problem adjusting. Like People want to just grab something and it have that perfect flipper tab. Right, they want that, and I, that's why with that knife, that would definitely go in a bad section for me. Does it work great? Yeah, but the finger to flipper tab placement is not good on it. All my my I, all like I have a ton of them. My other my two shuros. Uh, thank you for Mister Amazing, badass dude, best dude in the community. Um, the finger to flipper tab relationship. Is so good. It's so good on those. With the quantum, it's not. So same thing link with that detent ball. It's just different, which doesn't mean it's worse. It's just different. And once you get used to it, it's sweet. I mean, it is badass, but it does take a second to get used to. My dude, two by 72, Amera, wait, Amera braid belt sander is supposed to show Wait, it's supposed to show tomorrow. FedEx keeps pushing the delivery day, so hopefully it does come. Regrinds, rock patterns, and other mods coming soon. Hell yeah. Knife Modders has got, um, excuse me, some new tools showing up, so he's going to be able to offer some other um, services for everybody, which if you guys don't know, I highly recommend Knife Modders. Highly recommend them. Amazing work, and uh, I definitely recommend them, and I believe they stand by their shit, do good work, and if he's got some new shit coming, that's awesome, man. I know I definitely have some knives I want some regrinds done on, and if you're going to be able to do, like, scale texturing and, like, frag, I don't know exactly what you're going to be able to do with it, but, man, sky's the limit. I can't wait to see what you're going to do. Yeah, I want an F3 NS now because of you. Those F3s are sweet, man. The F3s are sweet. I want to get some um, fat carbon for mine. I keep thinking about it because the carbon fiber on it's beautiful, but they have fat carbon. I think I'd get like purple. Woo! That'd be so badass. Have you checked out any EDC pens yet? I got one. Um, I got one a two sun one and then i have just regular cool pens kara brings me home pens from work i love pens to be honest you would think as much as i love pens that i would have like the most badass pen collection because i do like i have like a little pen fetish like a pen that writes good i love it i gotta have it i like like if i grab a pen that doesn't write good i look for a different pen i like a good pen that writes good i've always been like that since i was a kid but no, I don't spend a lot of money on pens. I should spend. I should cough up a little bit, just a little bit, for for a good quality pen. That I like, but my Tucson one though is great. I love it. Um, now this next subject, um, I actually got from Nick Shabazz. So Nick Shabazz was saying that, and also Lefty EDC said this, but Lefty EDC explained himself. Yeah, that that's getting up there. The 
The Titaner Tech ti Titanium Pen is awesome. Like 36 bucks. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out. That's not bad at all. Shit. That's awesome. I need one that fits in my EDC pouch. Because that's the beauty with the, the Tucson one is I can take the cap off and it fits in my EDC pouch. Tactile turns. Pens are top notch. Yeah, I definitely need to check one out. Um, and they got that that uh, texture, right? Um, so the G2 rollerball are good. Twenty dollar fountain ref refillable. Awesome. Yeah, I definitely need to get a good one because I carry one every day. I do every day. I carry one and I use it pretty much every day. Um, so. Lefty EDC said he didn't like N690, but he said the reason why he didn't like N690 was because the Italian knife companies like Giant Mouse and Viper or something were using it and you basically pricing it like an M390, okay? But it's not. It's N690. So that's what he said. Why he said he didn't like it. But saying you don't like it for that reason should mean you do like it if you wind up getting it for 40 50 60 bucks, right? Now, Nick Shabazz said he didn't like it. I think it was on a Civivi knife. He didn't like it on a Civivi knife. Now, I was a little confused because, you know, so N690, it's basically like a VG10 BD1, um, a little bit under 154 CM. So in the cut test, there's not a lot of cut tests by them. The last cut test was two years ago, okay? And four years ago was Cedric Canada, at least what I found. There might be other ones. I'm not sure. But Cedric and Ada got 87 cuts, okay? Outpost 76 got 78 with the with fine edge and 104 with the working. And then on another edge, 82 and 108 feet of cardboard. So 78 cuts, 108 cuts. That's very close to to 154 cm results right so like i said vg10 bd1 um so i don't see and it's very stainless it's um it's easy to sharpen but he kind of made a comment saying that like it's like those but harder to sharpen and what's up bud what's up man gotta steal um but I don't understand that because N690 is easy to sharpen. I mean, it's very easy to sharpen. So I can't imagine why he would say it's it's like those other steels, but harder to sharpen. I would never say VG10 is easier to sharpen or worse to sharpen. They're, they're very similar. Now, N690 takes a great edge. And what we're talking about is a mid-range steel. Yes, I would rather see a Sandvik on any one of those knives. I would rather see 14C28 on. Uh, but N690, I'm not going to be mad at it for a certain price, right? 60 bucks and under. I'm not going to be mad at that. When you get up to $80, $90, $100, possibly. Depends on the company. Now... Shabazz is a knife snob. Budget knives can be a great company. Yeah, I think sometimes, you know, and he does handle a lot of knives, and he handles a lot of very, very high-end knives, but he knows what he's talking about. He really does. Nick Shabazz knows what he's talking about, and he sharpens, actually. He uses a KME, and he does sharpen, and, you know, from what I've seen, it seems like he, you know, he can sharpen pretty decent for, you know, a fixed-angled system, but I don't know if he necessarily knows a lot about the steels, and I'm not saying he doesn't. I just don't know if he does. Uh, obviously, he has his opinions. A lot of people's opinions are tossed around from other people's opinions, and they're not necessarily theirs. I try to get my opinions from my experience, regardless of what other people think or like. And even if I get hate on it, you know, I can only be honest about my experience which people have like tried to like call me out as if like it wasn't true or something it's like how are you going to tell me what my experience was but um with good diamonds pretty much everything facts todd facts everything's easy to sharpen with diamonds that's why i always tell you guys use diamonds man <laughs> everything's easy to sharpen Oh, yeah, so there's regular production churros, then three bears or high tier production, I think. Then there's collabs, which 200 are made. Then custom division, which are a set of 30. And finally, full customs. To me, VG10 at 154 CM, perform and sharpen the same. 
haven't had to sharpen my N690 knife yet. Yeah, and you're going to find the same thing with N690. The one difference to me is that 154CM does not take a great polish. It gets slick. It doesn't keep its bite. I'm not saying you're not going to find some 154CM that does take a good bite. And I notice CPM 154 is worse. Now, it might hold an, a better edge with a low grit, but from my personal experience, CPM 154, and I've sharpened custom CPM 154 at a polish, it, it gets slick. You want a medium grit on 154CM. And 690 can take a good polish. Hey, Joe, thank you, man. Thank you for the donation. What up, Joe? I appreciate that, man. Thank you. It's awesome. Um, I got a rake P121 because of Shabazz's review. A lot of people have gotten a lot of things because of Shabazz's review. I think he's the one that came up with that ounce per inch thing that I, I scream about. I like Shabazz, though. I do. Um, now, I do think, though, that... Uh, how do I say it? No, I don't want to say that. I feel like I'll be I'll be out of line saying that. Um, so let's talk about convex edges versus V grind. I know we didn't tell a story tonight, guys. If you guys want a story, um, I can come up with one. I did not write one down. I forgot to write one down. Otherwise, we can just continue to talk knives. I do have a couple more things written down. The ounce per thoughts facts. That's what I was saying earlier. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. If it, like I like I said earlier, if it's a three inch blade and under, yeah, maybe. Once you get over three inches, that goes out the window. Like that's the like if if you're looking for that, you're also looking for a very weak knife. <laughs> you are. Um, not saying it's not possible, but it, it, it wants you. You're if you're expecting it. You're expecting very, very cheap materials, you know, very thin, flimsy materials. I don't want that. I hate that thinking, too. And I think people like looking at a knife and saying, oh, it's heavy because it's over an ounce per inch. You're out of your mind, right? And you're, you're literally taking somebody else's argument that never made sense in the first place. Because it doesn't. It literally makes absolutely no sense. Even when we're looking at this, this is steel. And luckily, they were able to get it just a little over three uh, ounces. It's like 3.1 or 3.2. And it's made out of steel. So they did a great job keeping the weight down on this considering it's steel. But it's also an extremely light blade. Very thin behind the edge. Nice thin scales. So think about if you put anything else on this knife. If you if you make the 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 knife any longer or anything like that, it's out the window. You know. Now, if you're dealing with micarta, very thin liners, T6 hardware, small stop pins, yeah, maybe. But you're you're talking about sacrificing the strength and build quality, in my opinion. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate that, man. Cheers to you. Um, I care more about the width of the handle than the weight of the knife. Me too. I, I that's a, I, I care about everything else before the weight. Now I'm not saying there's not going to be a limit of which I'm like, man, that thing is heavy, right? There's going to be that. If it's made out of pure copper or gold or brass, yeah, there you're going to have that. But like with certain knives, especially little knives. I, I sometimes like them to be heavy. I feel like I actually have a tool in my hand. Sometimes you, you they get way too light, and I think it takes away the tool aspect. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes it's nice to have a very light knife on you, but saying that they all need to be that way is ridiculous. Dealing with the Chinese factories, they've taken that line of thinking as a rule for the whole American market. We need to show them that we as customers disagree yeah i just i don't want to see them not care either though you know i i do want to see like at a certain point certain things don't need to be milled out 
At a certain point, don't give me a T6. Give me a T8. At a certain point, give me a big stop pin, right? But I also don't want them looking at it like, you know, just no, no care in the world and make it really thick and heavy because there is a limit, right? But I think we're well in the range of where we're okay. <laughs> we don't have too many pocket knives coming out that we're just like, holy shit, man, this thing is way too heavy. Definitely prefer a knife that feels good in the hand and works. Weight be damned. Right. That's what it's about. I mean, if you're wearing jogging pants every day, I still don't think it matters. I'll be honest. I have no issues carrying a heavy knife on my belt. So when I wear jogging pants, I don't carry in my pocket. And if you guys do, you guys are doing it wrong. Carry around your belt. You can literally take it. Like right now, I'm wearing jogging pants right now. Like, I would go up like this and carry it right on, right on my belt. That way, it's easy to get out, easy to get back in, and I don't have to worry about it. I, that's how, and I carry it perfectly. Never have an issue. This is a heavy knife right here. This isn't a light knife. This has got a big old steel back spacer, and it's pretty tough. But I, I, I've never had an issue. So when people say, like, if you're wearing jogging pants, maybe it won't work. It's like, yeah, because you're carrying in your, who would, who can carry a knife in jogging pants pockets? I don't understand it. I could never do it. My knife would fall out or something. Jared, yeah, yeah, you make a discord for the channel. I almost did a while back and then I had a friend has got hacked and then I didn't. Um, but I might make a discord eventually, but yeah, I did have a buddy that has got hacked. And what happened was, was somebody was pretending to be him. Hey mom, I'm still alive. Yeah. Let me call you back. I'll call you right back as soon as I'm done. All right. Bye. Um, sorry guys, but yeah, um, I, I, I don't worry about weight. I bought the Sabenza. From knife ship free instead returns within 14 days and 10%. Guess what's in my pants? <laughs> I don't wear jogging pants unless I'm at home. Yeah, me too. I mean, I, I don't leave with jogging pants unless I'm going to the gym, right? But then usually I change at the gym. Like tomorrow morning, if I don't work which I'm probably not going to. I'm going to the gym at 9 a.m. Before that, I'm already going to be working. I'm going to get up at probably 5.30, 6 o'clock. I'll start working, and then I'll I'll hit the gym and wear jogging pants then, then change back into jeans. I wear jeans. So I never worry about weight. And like I said, if I'm wearing jogging pants, I still got a fucking knife on me. You can be damn sure I still got a knife on me, but it's on my belt. Did you say you were making another channel? What's it going to be about? So I am making another channel. It's going to be about healthy addictions. It's going to be about um, uh, making. It's going to be basically for everybody, okay? Because I, I don't want to say addictions and people think it's necessarily about people recovering from an addiction like that. It's about healthy addictions. It's about ways to improve your life from a healthy mindset and healthy decisions and basically a, a focus on yourself and taking care of yourself and doing the right things. And then I'm also hoping to get other people on that have whatever experience, you know, you name it, right? I don't care what the experience is and what they did to, to better themselves, help themselves, maybe even what they did that destroyed their self, right? And then what they did to get out of it or what they're doing, right? It doesn't necessarily have to mean that they wound up in a good place, but what they're doing about it, right? Because I think it's healthy to for people to share their experiences with other people that could be in the same situation. And if everybody is in the same mindset of bettering their self, doing good, being healthy, not, you know, not just physically, but mentally, right. And focusing on the right things and doing the right things. I think that's good for society. I think it's good for, for communities. And I think it's good for men and women to play their roles, right. To do their roles the right way and make good communities. I think, um, you know, with 
whatever, right? Whatever problems that have happened. Everybody has fucking issues. Everybody. So what do you do about it? What do you do about it? How do you stay on your path? What are the the little things you do to make your, like, because think about it. Everybody's got little techniques, different techniques and things that they do that keep them on a path or keep them in the right mindset. And sharing that with people, you know, it helps people. And I know it helped me a lot. You know, when, when I was trying to get on a better path, it was listening to other people and, you know, listening to, to how they did it or how to do it, how to, to keep yourself in a better mindset and the way to think and the way to stop thinking, because sometimes it's not just what to do. It's what to stop doing. Right. Like maybe even taking and, um, like each video, maybe setting up something like for the next 24 hours, do this. All right, like try to figure out these things or, you know, w- watch your life for the next 24 hours and focus on these things and see what's wrong here or see what's right here. See the things you can keep repeating, like just stuff like that. And there's also going to be a sprinkle of entertainment, a sprinkle of fun and joking around, even if it's about bad situations, because I like to find the humor in bad. Right. I think that's I think that's healthy. So finding the humor in things and sprinkle that on there. Maybe talk a little bit about, um, you know, just, you know, past experiences, other people's past experiences, um, places, uh, or ways to, to get out of those situations or what brought you to those situations and the decisions you made that, that made you ultimately fuck up or whatever. Right. But just talking about that and basically surrounding the, the conversation of healthy addiction, right? What are healthy addictions you can do to pick up to better yourself and make you better than yesterday and the people around you, because the better you are, the better the people are around you, right? You can't be a good fill in the blank without being good internally, right? Like you can't be a great fill in the blank if you're not healthy minded. The more healthy minded you are, the better you're going to be around you with your surroundings and the people around you and the better you're going to be able to influence and help them. Right. It's kind of like um, you can't give love if you don't love yourself. Right. So you can only give what you have. So it's kind of like like loaning money. You can't loan money you don't have. Right. If you don't love yourself first, you can't give it. So saying, telling somebody you love them when you're treating yourself like shit, think about that. Think about somebody walking around, right? Fucking their self up, doing bad behaviors, doing bad things, not taking care of their self, not showering, not doing this, whatever the case is, right? Just picture that. But yet they tell the person next to them that they love them, right? They think they do, but how can they really? I mean, they do to an extent, but nowhere near the kind of love that they'd have if they loved their self first, if they took care of their self. You know, think about a homeless mother, a homeless mother taking care of a kid. Do you think she's taking good care of that kid? Probably not, right? But if she took care of herself, she would have more to give to that kid. But just stuff like that. All right, guys. Yeah, I'm about to get out of here too. Um, I appreciate all the likes. I know we almost hit a hundred. It is deep, right? And I think, I, I personally think that it might be a successful channel. I love this community and I love doing this, but that's also something I would like to do. I'd like to, to, to get a more, to get people involved in helping other people with their words and, uh, stories and, you know, just, making a podcast out of it. And like I said, people can come like I'll actually have people come. There might even be times where I'm sitting down with them personally, right? Like I want to make it to where it's a place for people to come click on and listen to it and get good information. I want them to hear it and put their brain in a mindset of success, of working, of doing good things. Because by hearing, it's kind of like, like, you should surround yourself with things you want to be, things you want to do. If you surround yourself with it and it's all you see and it's all you hear, you wind up doing those behaviors. So I think it's really good for people to listen to those types of things. You might not be in the same situation as a story I'm telling, right? But 
the way to improve yourself is it's always going to work the same. So it's not like just because I did this, right? And this is what I had to do to, to get out of it and do better. That will still relate. That will still relate with everybody, everybody. So, hey, man, going to steal. Thank you, man. Thank you for the donation. I appreciate that. Keep it up. Thank you. And yes, Francisco. Yes. And learning from other people's experiences because there's so many smart people out here that actually have really good information that have just brilliant information that can help everybody, you know, and sometimes it's that little angel out there, right? That, that has that right word that just resonates with you and makes you do something that, or makes you get into a better uh, mindset than you did yesterday. And that's what it's basically about. It's getting people in a healthy mindset. And like I said, there's going to be entertainment in there, right? There's going to be the laughing parts, the parts, because that's what it's about, right? I think a good, healthy mind laughs. So yeah, I can't wait to actually start it. I'll probably start it after the ninth, after my surgery. I'll probably, you know, pump, pump out like five, six videos at once because I will need everybody's help to, to hurry up and sub so that I can get to a thousand so that I can get monetized and get lives going and stuff like that because I can't do the lives and have people, you know, face to face without doing that. So thank you guys. I appreciate you guys hanging out. What's up? Q ball. Oh man, you guys are awesome for hanging out with me. I did have a few other things to talk about. We'll save it for the next time. There's always a next time. The ninth, I believe. I believe it's on the ninth is the surgery. So we'll see. I love you guys. Thank you guys for hanging out. Peace. And thanks for the donations and everything else you guys do. You guys are amazing. The best. You guys are the best. Can you do lives through StreamYard under a thousand? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think I can because if you're not monetized, I don't think you can do lives. I possibly maybe because you're paying for it, but I don't I don't know. The, but the point is if I'm not monetized, it's gonna be hard to do a lot of things because YouTube won't offer you certain things without being monetized. So I just gotta get to monetize quick. It doesn't mean the content's gonna be any less or anything. So we just gotta get that. We're always gonna be pushing for the next goal anyway. So fucking get monetized. That's the most important. But if I can do a live without being monetized, I will. I love you guys. Peace.